So we have turbulent. Let's say I will have a, a new project, okay? Uh, and the name will be uh, scaled up, scaled down. And what I have here is a tank. I have to select a tank. I will select, for instance, this tank. And the main important parameter will be, of course, the diameter of the tank, the volume, nominal volume of the tank, and the volume I have inside. Now, when you click OK, let's say you have buffer like this. You have four buffers, 160 millimeter. Big number will give me the maximum one. Distance from the bottom, distance from the wall, and of course, a normal angle between the R axis and the buffer that is zero degrees. I can select, for instance, uh, that I have a, a pinch pedal, okay? And the, in my pinch pedal that I have, the diameter uh, will be, for instance, uh, 800, I have four blades, 45 degree, the weight of the blade, let's say, will be uh, uh, 120, the distance from the bottom 450, the RPM, the maximum I can use is 120, and my motor 7,500. I have here some density that I use like now water only to facilitate it and viscosity. And I will add, for instance, some solids, okay? And it will be 1,001. The concentration of the solid will be a uh, uh, 10%, the density 1,500, and the particle size will be from 100 micron to 200 micron, okay? Okay, this is my system ready to use. This is my system. I want to go down, how to do? Scale up or down, open, ready. What do you want to do? For instance, you want now to use in a, uh, cube meter, 0 0.0, uh, two, uh, two liters, okay? Immediately calculate the diameter, and I can select at the beginning of the way that I want to do scale up based on energy of dissipation, you see, or micro mixing times, or uh, impeller radius of number, as you see how immediately changing the results, okay? Or other way to do is to come or enter a target of velocity, let's say I want 700, the maximum that I can do. Okay? I can estimate again. Or other way to do is to come to one of the unit operations. Let's say I want a suspension. You see here you have the a, parameter that we selected, and here the explanation why at this stage, this parameter is the main important one. And the explanation is scientific one. We need to take care about the plaquet number uh, to maintain the solids moving according to the geometry similarity and the dynamic similarity. And like this, I can select every one of them. And for every one of them, uh, from, from, for every one of them, I will get some explanation. Okay. Okay. So let's say I am happy with it. I get immediately what is the velocity I have to apply in the lab. You see, this was the solution. It was the lab. But when I click OK, now I will click here. The name will be lab. Okay. Lab. And when you click save, now you have two equipments ready to use. In the pro, in the product in the lab equipment, I have uh, some uh, uh, solid distribution. Okay, that the solid distribution is the following: you have here the bottom of the tank and the top of the tank. You have here the local concentration. So, if you take sample uh, sample, for instance, from the bottom of the tank, and you will measure what is the real concentration there. Uh, and you will compare with the average concentration, and in our case, our case was 100 kilograms per cubic meter of solid. Now you will measure about one, uh, uh, one, uh, 108 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so the relative concentration 
is the local concentration divided by the average concentration. So it's 1.08 or 1.1. And when you are going from the bottom of the tank to the top of the tank, you see how the concentration of the solids is decreasing. You have more material in the bottom and in the top. And it is clear because my material is high. Now, if I tile and I come to my original uh, equi equipment that was slow uh, sl uh, scaling down, I can calculate the actual distribution. And you see that it is a little different. It is not the same. Yes, because I ask in my options, I ask the picking uh, the, the material that will take uh, will moving. So the minimum velocity to generate moving of the solids, no the position of the precipitation of the solid in the bottom of the tank that are not moving, just solid suspension. Okay. So for this, it gives me the velocity and the the uh, the particle size is different. If I ask uh, from here again, okay, scale down to a, a suspension, okay, and estimate uh, for two liter. An estimate you see now is one thousand three hundred and fifty. When I click there, and I have a lab number two. Now, this is my equipment, and I will calculate the actual distribution. That will be exactly the same. You see, this is exactly the same that we have here. This is my actual model, and it is my scale up calculation. Now, from here, now you are in the lab. This is the prototype you need. If you have a slight deviation in the lab, it is not a problem. Use what you know, use this clone, okay, and change here a little the, the diameter of the velocity, whatever you want. Okay, and let's say that you are 1,000, and you will be able to, uh, to tell everyone, you know, now my deviation in the particle size will be instead 4%, 6%, so no big deal, it's close to the same, go ahead. This is the tool we need to use. You want to generate reports that you remember well, we have completely reports about solid-liquid mixing, okay, that give you a capability to, uh, give a name okay and with the help of this excel and uh, build a report okay that contains let's say the volume the pm and the non-uniformity okay this is for my 1.5 liter and if I do exactly the same for my scale down, exactly the same report, I will, of course, get uh, the results for it directly come to Excel and add my original uh, data. Okay. Now it's different because, as you remember, I change the velocity now to 1,600. What the, the software provides me, I change to the maximum possible.